She should have contacted them long ago but chose not to time and time again because of her own reasons. However, when she opened up the news of Harkin to see a piece about Monica and Michael's wedding, she could not control herself and called her. There was no way Monica would be so sincere about marrying Michael. Something must have happened to her. She recalled how bad of a friend she had been. Every time she needed help, Monica would risk her life to help her. However, when Monica needed help, she was always absent. Jean, you were finally willing to call me. Do you know how worried I've been? When you suddenly disappeared, I thought it was going to be a repeat of seven years ago. I couldn't find you no matter what. Monica cried fiercely. She felt so wronged. Jean wanted to ask if Monica had asked Edward about her disappearance. Although, even if she did, that did not meant Edward would tell her since Edward was probably prejudiced against Monica because of Finn. She could even imagine that if Monica had went to Bamboo Garden to find her, she would probably have been rejected, especially if she met Knox. With Edward injured as well, Knox definitely would not have left. Jean felt very guilty at the thought of this. She had indeed cared too little about Monica. She said, it's not that I wanted to disappear all of a sudden. There were just some things that made it impossible for me to return to Harkin for the time being. Monica was still sobbing. Other than crying, she did not know what else she to say. So she hugged the phone and continued crying. Jean cried until she was on the verge of a breakdown. At this moment, she really felt that she had committed an unpardonable crime. Don't cry, Jean consoled her, little speechless. I'm not dead. Monica was suddenly amused by Jean. For the first time in forever, she cracked the most sincere smile she ever had. She had been too depressed recently. Even though she kept rejecting Michael in her own way, deep down in her heart, she really did not want to court death to this extent. She did not want all these people despising and insulting her, either. All she wanted was to live a peaceful life. With Jean's phone call, she felt that the world was not such a cold and distant place anyway. At least she had the best family in the world and a friend who was sincere. They would never betray her. In actuality, as long as one's pursuit in life was not too high, one could still discover many beautiful things in the world. Therefore, she did not need to feel that the world had collapsed because of Michael. She had to live on. I saw the news of your marriage to Michael, Jean said. Monica wiped away her tears. Now that she had thought it through, she felt much more relaxed. She said, it's on the 15th of next month. Do you still want to be with him? Jean asked. She had missed a lot of things between Monica and Michael while she was away. Jean did not know if Monica was still oblivious to the fact that Michael had been lying to her, and that's why she was not very emotional about it. What else can I do? I can't beat him, Monica said as she calmed herself down. You can't win? Jean frowned. That's right. You all knew that Michael was lying to me, and I was stupid enough to think that I was only saving the dying and healing the injured, doing the God's work in the world. Monica mocked herself. You found out? Jean was almost certain. Yep. Michael's mother personally told me that Michael was not in a crisis of unemployment at all. It was just a show for the Sanders so that they would put him in a position of power without any worries. To the Sanders, Michael was a threat if his ambition was too big. Michael had to let the Sanders think that he would give up everything for me. Only then would the Sanders sincerely support and promote him, Monica said angrily. Michael admitted it too. When she thought about how she had been deceived by Michael, she hated him to the core. Jean fell silent. She did not think Michael's goal was that simple. After all, the Sanders would not be so easily deceived. However, she felt that the most important thing now was not to find out Michael's other purpose, as that would take time. It was to make sure that Monica would not be threatened by Michael and forced to marry him. Jean asked, you said just now that you couldn't win against Michael. What did he do to force you to marry him? Monica became even angrier as she spoke. However, she did not hide anything from Jean and told her everything she had been through. She sounded indignation. Do you think I'm stupid? Monica asked Jean. Now that she had replayed her plan to Jean, Monica felt she was hopelessly stupid. Jean even gave an affirmative reply, it was very stupid, indeed. Monica felt uncomfortable. Jean said, while it wasn't the smartest method, and although the outcome wasn't what you hoped for, it did make Michael uncomfortable. So it wasn't a complete loss. Monica felt that Jean was trying her best to find something to comfort her. Although, I do have to say that you've been going about this wrongly from the start. Jean hit the nail on the head. Monica held the phone, still a little sulky. From the beginning, you were only thinking about how you could torture yourself. You thought it was easier, so you chose the shortcut. 
Perhaps if it were someone else, someone who was not as shrewd and scheming, you would have achieved your wish. However, Michael isn't as simple as you think. In the face of your revenge, he definitely wasn't thinking about how to break up with you but how to force you to let go. This is the difference between you and Michael. You tortured yourself, and he tormented you. That's why you lost so badly. Jean analyzed thoroughly. How can I torture him? He's in a high position and has great power now. Monica had no confidence at all. You just aren't cruel enough, Jean said bluntly. Monica gripped her phone tightly. You just dare not to hurt others. That's why you put everything on the line. Even though you knew that Michael was the cause of everything, you still bore all the consequences. At the end of the day, even if you used this method to divorce Michael, he still wouldn't be affected in any way. In fact, you left him a bright path, Jean said, feeling helpless toward Monica. Though, it was understandable. As Monica had never been hurt since she was young, it would not be the way she would retaliate first. Silly Monica. It is that simple. While Jean really did not want her to lose her innocence, this was the reality. Monica must learn to grow up. When society began to test her, she could only accept the cruelty of reality. Monica, are you willing to marry Michael? Jean suddenly asked her in a serious tone. No. Monica said firmly and without hesitation. At the thought of living under the same roof as Michael, sleeping with Michael, she was honestly afraid that she would suffocate to death. Then, listen to me. Do not give Fu Kong any leeway, Jean said word by word. There's no way I can win against him. You can. Jean was very certain. Monica was still not confident. I think it's the easiest thing to do in this world reject a marriage, Jean said. Monica had obviously been dealt a huge blow and had already started digging her own grave. Jean could actually say that it was the easiest, but the distance between them was probably a galaxy away. Jean said, first, a peaceful breakup. Second, a one-sided breakup. It's obvious you failed both ways. Yeah. Therefore, we only have the third option, force the other party to break up. In fact, you have thought of it and even done it. You just didn't do it perfectly, Jean said tactfully. However, Monica knew. Her plan had not been flawed but completely useless. What you need to do now is not to make Michael undesire you. None of us know the bottom line of a person. You don't know Michael's bottom line either. If he dared expose your private photos, then he shouldn't have any bottom line, Jean said sarcastically. Monica gritted her teeth. Michael was indeed crueler than she thought. So, you should push Michael out of your league. Was Jean joking? Though she did not say it out loud. She was afraid Jean would scold her if she did. She heard Jean say, the way to make Michael fall short of you is not by showing how outstanding you are, but how much of a scumbag he is. Monica was stunned. Those words seemed to have opened the door to a whole new world for her. She had always felt that from the looks of it, she was unworthy of Michael. He was now the youngest director of Harkin, and with the Sanders' support, his future was limitless. She was just a girl from a rich family with no merit. Michael was more than enough of a match for her. Expose Michael's scandal. Jean had given her the answer. Monica gritted her teeth. She had never thought about it like that and felt she could not expose herself. What scandal could Michael possibly have? While she had always been diligent, serious about her work, and polite to her relatives and friends, even if she exposed Michael's schemes, she had no evidence. It was her word against his. Who would believe her? Jean had indeed dug a big hole for her. No. Just make some for him, Jean said bluntly. Monica was stunned again. How? Monica, this is a world where the strong prey on the weak. If you don't become stronger, you'll only be constantly bullied and compromised. The first step to being powerful is to be ruthless. Jean did not want to teach Monica these things, but she had to. It was clear she could not always be by Monica's side. She did not know if she would even still be alive in this world in the near future. She could not provide help to Monica whenever and wherever she needed it, only forcing Monica to develop on her own. I, what should I do? Monica was still not confident. First of all, you have to be sure that you're doing this not to let Michael down, but because Michael has been lying to you since the start, and even threatening your family now. You're protecting yourself. There's no need to feel guilty about it. M.M. Monica nodded. Jean was right. Michael had forced her hand. She could not pity Michael, not at any time. Next, you have to think carefully about what you can do to ruin Michael's reputation. Jean reminded her. This made Monica think of how to harm people, but her mind was blank. She broke down. I really don't know. It's okay. I've thought of something for you, Jean said. Monica's eyes almost popped out. 
How could Jean have thought of it within a few minutes of their phone call? Do you remember when Finn was drugged? Jean asked. Why would you suddenly bring up that matter? She was already trying her best to forget. She didn't want to remember. It hurt to remember. It was Michael, Jean told her frankly. If she were to tell Monica all the truths now, she would believe her and accept it, even. It was unlike before when she might have had a mental breakdown. Michael bribed two of Sarah's classmates and got them to instigate Sarah into using this method to get Finn. The purpose was to make you completely give up on Finn and be with Michael. However, the plan went wrong, and in the end, led you to consummate your marriage with Finn. However, since Michael used such a despicable method to get you, you can use it back on him. An eye for an eye. You mean, you want me to find someone to drug Michael? Then, find a woman to sleep with him and take an indecent photo of him? When Monica said this, Jean was surprised. Yep, Jean answered affirmatively. But, why don't you just marry Michael, then? Live under the same roof with him for the rest of your life, sleep on the same bed, and even give birth to a bunch of children for him. Jean, don't disgust me like that. Monica couldn't stand it at all. He was so despicable that he even implicated your parents and threatened you with your family business. Why do you think you need to show him mercy? I don't need to. Monica gritted her teeth. Michael was evil. She did not need to leave him any room for negotiation. Success is not defined by whether or not you win a round, but by making the opponent unable to get up again, Jean said. If you don't completely suppress Michael, then the next to suffer will be you, your parents, and maybe even your entire family. Monica, you can't be soft-hearted to your enemies at any time. All right, Monica agreed. Jean was right. Mercy to the enemy was cruelty to oneself. Now, let me tell you what to do. How are you going to get Michael to walk into your trap with him unprepared? Jean meant business. Monica meant business too. She really felt that her conversation with Jean had opened up her entire world. She used to think that Jean was very capable, but she never knew just how capable she was. This time, she had been willing to give it all up. Jean spoke to Monica for a long time. She explained that Monica was not actually stupid. She just did not want to work hard and was content with the status quo. If she honed her potential, Monica would surprise everyone. When Jean put down her phone, Lucy appeared beside her and handed her a cigarette. Lucy was the one who taught her how to smoke. She said that the life of an assassin would be rather boring. Therefore, she used cigarettes to relieve that boredom. They each smoked one. After half a month of recuperation, Lucy's body had recovered a lot. They stood on a large balcony, overlooking Delta Island. Was the person you were chatting with just now, Monica, asked Lucy. M.M. Jean smiled. Best friend? Yep. Jean nodded. That's great. Lucy smiled. She seemed envious. Nothing awaits an assassin. Family, friendship, and love were all extravagant hopes. You didn't contact George? Lucy asked. Not yet. Don't know how to face Fourth Master Swan? Lucy was very smart. There had been many times that she had given Kingsley advice beyond the scope of an assassin. Right again. Jean did not hide it. The cruelty she had previously shown to Edward could at least be forgiven. He, in turn, stabbed Lucy's heart. Now, it seemed like they were too embarrassed to face each other. In fact, she had told George before, when she decided to keep him by Edward's side, that if she left one day, regardless of whether she died or returned with Kingsley to turn against Edward, her departure would be her choice. She had told him not to blame anyone, and that he should not wait for her. If she could come back one day, she would return by herself. If she didn't, he would have to take care of himself. George was more mature than the average child. He also knew much more than kids his age. As long as she told him, he would accept it. Besides, George had grown up in the hills. Although he was not exposed to the bloody world, she did not deliberately hide the existence of the hills from him either. From the moment George could remember, he had already seen many cruel scenes. Therefore, his ability to accept things was much stronger than the average person. In the future, you and Fourth Master Swan, Yu Jia extinguished her cigarette. The woman in her thirties still had her charm. Are you really going to fight each other? What choice do I have? Jean asked. From the moment she returned to the hills, she had no choice. At least her mother had been courageous enough to leave and did not return, even until her death. However, she could not. There were too many factors, and so she was forced back into living this life. Maybe you do, Lucy said. Mr. Hill would give it to you. Jean smiled. That depends on the outcome. National hatred and family feud, the winner would always be the king. Lucy did not say anything more. 
She turned around and said, I'm going to look for Mr. Hill. All right. Jean nodded. Before Lucy left, she turned to glance at Jean. She was envious of Jean. She was the cleanest woman she had ever met, even if she did live in a murky world. She walked to Kingsley's room. With her having recuperated for half a month now, she should report to Kingsley. Regardless of whether or not Kingsley allowed her to come out, she still came out in the end. She knocked on the door, but there was no response from inside. Lucy waited at the door for a long time before Melinda opened the door. She casually wrapped herself in a bath towel in Kingsley's room. While Kingsley was not there at that moment, the sound of someone taking a shower could be heard from the bathroom. He had just probably finished. Sister Lucy? Melinda said, deliberately respectful and affectionate. Just call me Lucy. You're a senior, after all. Melinda appeared very humble. Besides, I'm only 25 this year. Lucy's lips curved into a faint smile. She could gather what Melinda meant. It meant that she was old, and she could forget about peeping at Kingsley. However, she did not need Melinda's reminder. She, at least, still had this bit of self-awareness. The Hills have always been ranked by status. Since you're now the closest person to Mr. Hill, naturally, your status is different from ours. Though I'm indeed much older than you, I won't address you respectfully, and you don't have to be so polite to me. It's best if you call me by my name. Since you've said so, I'll call you Lucy from now on. Melinda looked pleased with herself. When she heard Lucy say that she had a higher status, she couldn't help but feel smug. Lucy nodded. I'm looking for Mr. Hill. He's showering. The bathroom door opened, and Kingsley walked out naked. Lucy glanced at him before shifting her gaze away. Melinda walked over self-assuringly and tied the bathrobe she had been wearing around Kingsley's waist. Mr. Hill, Lucy is looking for you. Okay, Kingsley responded. After receiving permission, Lucy entered the room. Naked, Melinda climbed onto Kingsley's bed while he took a cigarette and walked to the balcony. Lucy followed him and stood behind him respectfully. What's the matter? Kingsley asked. Nothing. I'm just here to report to you, Lucy said. I've fully recovered. Kingsley turned to glance at Lucy and sized her up. He fixed his gaze on her chest and said, You've lost weight. Lucy felt his gaze eyeing her up and down. She smiled. You get smaller when you're old. Is that so? Kingsley smiled at her response, the corners of his mouth seemingly mocking. Yeah. Lucy appeared very respectful. Get out. I understand. Kingsley shifted his gaze to the balcony. As Lucy turned to leave, Kingsley asked, How's Jean? In Kingsley's world, the only person he cared about was Jean. She's fine physically. As for her heart, she might still carry some burden. Lucy did not hide anything from him. Enlighten her understood. When Lucy saw that Kingsley had stopped talking, she got up and left his room. The moment she left, Melinda called out to her. Sister Lucy, no. Lucy. Lucy turned to look at Melinda. Could you go to my room and get me some clothes? I was with Mr. Hill just now, and they were torn. Sure, Lucy agreed. She walked out of Kingsley's room and into Melinda's. This was where she used to live. She was really a beauty in her twilight years. She randomly found a set of clothes for Melinda. When she returned to Kingsley's room, she saw a glaring scene on the balcony. She had missed it previously, but from where she was standing now, she could clearly see a long wound on Kingsley's abdomen. It looked like a new wound, it was obviously just healed into a scab. As expected, Melinda was good at making men like her. So, it was not that she had lost weight, only that some people's breasts were more voluptuous. She placed Melinda's clothes on the bed and left, even closing the door behind her. She did not notice, but a line of sight from the balcony watched her leave. When Lucy returned to her room, Jean was already gone. These past few days, Jean had been spending time with her from time to time. She was well aware that Jean had a lot on her mind and her heart. Unable to express it, she could only find someone to accompany her to ease her emotions. Lucy picked up another cigarette and started smoking. She wondered what the future had in store for her, and what would happen to the hills. Southampton City. Monica sorted out all the information Jean had told her. She took a deep breath and decided to take a gamble. Although she did not know the final outcome, she called Michael anyway. Have you thought it through? The other party asked immediately. Will you let my family and my parents off if I agree to marry you? Monica said through gritted teeth. Jean had told her not to let Michael think that she would accept his proposal easily though, she did not need to perform. The thought of accepting Michael, even if it were fake, made her feel terrible. Yep, Michael said bluntly. All right, 
Then, Monica said. I'll marry you. Michael was a little surprised. Monica said coldly, you'll always know what I care about the most. Jean also said that she had to make Michael believe that she was really compromising, so she deliberately spoke a lot of guiding language. Michael believed her. From what he knew, Monica not only treated her family but the people she acknowledged as well. She would even help them at the cost of her own life. Back then, he was able to use Monica to get what he wanted because of his grasp of Monica's mentality. So, can you solve our family's crisis? Monica asked. Sure, Michael said. It was so straightforward that even Monica was surprised. However, I need you with me to clear up all the previous misunderstandings and announce our engagement, Michael said bluntly. Monica was fuming. She was so angry that she wanted to vomit blood. However, at that moment, all she said was, okay. I'll pick you up at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Michael was not someone sloppy. Remember to dress appropriately. If you play any tricks, not only will Cardellini Medical Technology fire its chairman, I'll make the Cardellinis bankrupt too. Michael, you really are disgusting. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's because I love you. You're only doing this for your benefit and future. I love you as long as it doesn't affect my future. Michael enunciated each word clearly. Monica really wanted to kill Michael. See you tomorrow. Michael hung up. Monica was so angry that she smashed her phone. She must make Michael regret treating her like this. Monica tried her best to control her emotions as she slowly walked into her parents' room. If it was not for Jean, she might really have compromised. Gary and Ruby were a little surprised to see their daughter looking for them, but still, they did not tell Monica about Cardellini Medical Technology's current situation. It was to let her be willful. Even though it was clear she was not doing a good job, they still supported her. Parents like hers. Monica's eyes turned red. She said, Dad, why didn't you tell me that you're being forced to this point by the board of directors? Gary was stunned. Who did you hear that from? Who else could it be? Michael, that scumbag, of course. Gary's expression turned ugly. Don't be threatened by him. Her mother must have told him about Michael's sinister and cunning scheme. That was why her father would rather shoulder everything himself than let her suffer for him. I will not be threatened by him. Monica gritted her teeth. However, I won't let you guys be suppressed by him either. Huh? Gary frowned. Monica had never been responsible before. Ever since she was young, his expectations of her were not high. He did not know if he had been spoiling her or harming her by doing so. I've agreed to marry Michael, Monica said. Before she could finish her sentence, Gary was already enraged. No matter how bad it gets, I will not sell my daughter out. Let me finish, Dad. Monica rolled her eyes. She finally knew who she took after with her impulsive personality. Gary endured it. Monica said, I've agreed to the marriage with Michael first to let down his guard. Then, I'll think of a way to find Michael's scandal and expose him so that he has no choice but to give up marrying me. Gary just stared at Monica. Was she sleep-talking? Ruby looked at her in the same way. She obviously felt that this was an unlikely plan. Monica looked at their expressions. Her parents had not restrained from hiding their thoughts about her plan. Could they not have a little more faith in her? You guys don't believe me. Monica's face was full of hurt. Michael's not as simple as you think, Gary said. Although I've never fought with Michael, for him to hold such a high position at such a young age, it's a definite that he's not as easy to deal with as you thought. This is also why your mother and I have always been so against you being with Michael. Michael's mind is very heavy. One day, you won't even know how you sold yourself. It seems our worries were not unnecessary too since you've really sold yourself. Her parents were just adding unneeded salt to her wounds. I thought Michael truly loved you. When your mother and I saw you commit suicide that time, we thought it was an act, Gary said, gritting his teeth. Who would have expected Michael to be so shrewd that even he deceived me? Just based on this, you can't win against Michael. This was also why Gary and Ruby did not tell Monica about their situation. Monica was easily swayed by her emotions and would compromise very quickly, just like now. Secondly, it would be useless to say anything and only add to Monica's troubles. People like Michael were too good at using tricks. They chose to hide in the dark until it was time to emerge and would always achieve their goal no matter what. Thinking about it made his teeth itch. Gary had also been suppressed by a man in his twenties for many years. I thought I couldn't win. I even decided to compromise, but Jean's been secretly helping me, Monica said. Gary frowned slightly. Jean's in Southampton City? There's something called a phone? Monica retorted. Gary was stunned, speechless. 
He never used to think that Jean was capable. After all, they were all young and in their twenties. To them, they were still growing and inexperienced. However, the results Jean had achieved during this period of time had indeed impressed him. Coupled with Michael's suppression of him this time, he had to admit that the world now belonged to the young. With Jean's help, you still have a chance of winning. Gary immediately agreed. Monica expressed her hurt. Her ego had taken a hit. She said, I'll discuss with Jean about the details, so don't ask me for them yet. I came to you today just to tell you that I'll pretend to be with Michael first to keep Cardellini Enterprise and your position as the chairman. We can't give up the family business for Michael. It's not worth it. After that, I'll know how to prevent us from getting married. What if it still happens? Gary was still worried. It was better to be safe than sorry for this matter. He did not want his daughter's happiness to be destroyed at the hands of Michael. Then we'll get married. Monica was unmoved. I won't allow it. Gary was furious. I, Gary, have not reached the point where I need to sell my daughter. Michael really likes me. Monica hugged and comforted her father. If she could not resist, she would compromise. Then, at least she could say that she tried. She would not make her family worry anymore nor choose to commit suicide again. She said, you were not deceived by Michael. Michael really does like me. That's why he treats me so well, making you all believe he loves me. In fact, there's nothing wrong with finding someone who loves me. I'm resisting now because I'm not willing to be tricked by Michael. However, if I really can't resist, I won't suffer any losses by marrying him. Monica, I don't want you to live such a depressing life. Ever since she was young, he could not bear to let his daughter suffer, so how could he allow other men to hurt her? Dad, it's not as tragic as you think. Besides, why don't you believe that I can refuse to marry Michael? Even if you don't believe in me, at least believe in Jean. She's very powerful now. Monica did not want her parents to worry. That was why she seemed to be in a particularly good mood. Before Gary could say something, he was stopped by Ruby. All right. Let's believe in our Monica, Yen Ruling said. With Jean secretly helping her, there's still a chance of winning. We can't back down before things have even started and destroy our own prestige. That's right. Monica agreed. It's a good thing you have a reliable friend. It was clear Gary had compromised. Otherwise, with your personality, you'd be helping others count money after being sold. Dad, she said. Monica was still a little unhappy. Who would say such a thing about their own daughter? Though this was the truth of the matter, and humans were afraid of being exposed. All right. Gary smiled kindly. No matter what happens in the end, your mom and I will support any decision you make. There's no need to put yourself in a difficult position. Thanks, Dad. Monica hugged Gary. She felt that she would not be able to do anything earth-shattering in her lifetime. While she did not have Jean's abilities, she at least had the best parents in the world, and that was enough for her to live life to the fullest. The next morning, Michael came to the Cardellini villa to pick Monica up. Monica had chosen a fitting white dress to wear. It was very dignified and elegant. Coupled with the simple makeup on her face today, she looked extremely pure and innocent. She was a completely different woman from the fiery dance that circulated widely a few days ago. It was clear she walked the path of a white lotus green TB asterisk TCH and had forcibly turned herself into a saint. Even Monica despised herself. Michael looked at Monica in front of him and sized her up. He seemed to be very satisfied with her dress and opened the door for her like a gentleman. Get in. Monica glanced at Michael but didn't show any hospitality. Jean had said she had to act naturally when facing Michael and not let him doubt her. However, it was really hard for her to put on an act. She suppressed her emotions and sat in Michael's car. As soon as they got in, Michael began to indifferently explain the press conference they were attending today. I've already bribed the reporters at the scene to only speak in a positive manner. As long as you don't mess around, everything will go smoothly. Monica did not answer back. I've also asked someone to re-edit the indecent photos of you a few days ago. It'll be replaced with the profile picture of another low-list female celebrity. The celebrity has already arranged a confession post as well. When the time comes, she'll admit it on Facebook and your unsightly photos will be replaced by someone else. So you'll still be innocent in the public's eye. Monica couldn't help but glance at Michael. He really had thought of everything. She would have never thought about finding a scapegoat. Michael was still expressionless. I'll propose to you at the press conference later, so you'd better be prepared. I don't want to clean up any more messes. My energy is limited, and the time I've spent on you now is my bottom line. If you really want me to resist, 
I won't have the patience to play with you next time. Monica gritted her teeth. Michael had finally stopped hiding in front of her. This vicious man, here are the questions and the answers you have to say. Take note of them. Monica took it. How ironic. The car fell into dead silence, until. We're here. Michael reminded her. Monica took a deep breath and put down the manuscript as the car drove straight to the press conference. Michael parked the car, opened the door, and got out. Then, like a gentleman, he walked over to Monica, opened the door, and helped her get out of the car. To outsiders, Michael was a gentleman with outstanding talent and ability. He was probably the pillar of Harkin. What a great existence. Monica held Michael's arm and walked toward the press conference. All the media outlets in Southampton City were waiting for them in the hall. It was a bit noisy at first, but once Monica and Michael appeared, it immediately quieted down. The entire venue was instantly filled with voices from every direction, and the camera flashes were non-stop. Before Michael and Monica sat down, he bowed slightly to the media to express his gratitude. Then, he pulled out a chair for Monica to take a seat and sat beside her after. The series of opening actions once again received a wave of positive comments from the public. Facing the microphone in front of him, Michael had not prepared any speech, but his attitude was sincere. I'm very grateful to all reporters and friends for attending my press conference despite your busy schedules. I'd also like to express my guilt for occupying public resources for my personal affairs. However, to clarify the damage to my fiancé's reputation, I had no choice but to use this method. I hope you can understand. His voice fell, and the crowd burst into a round of applause. It was an affirmation of Michael. Michael expressed his gratitude once more and said, During this time, my fiancé and I have been questioned and slandered by all parties, which has seriously affected my personal life and communication with my fiancé, as well as my current job. Now, I will clear my fiancé's name in front of all the media. Those indecent photos on the internet have nothing to do with my fiancé. They are malicious rumors intended to attract people's attention. The woman in the photo was called Raina Wilde. She once played the role of Oliva Scott in the television drama The Workplace. These photos are private photos of her and her boyfriend, and they deliberately circulated them to create clout. I never expected that it would be stolen by unscrupulous internet merchants who photoshopped my fiancé's profile picture into them, causing the public to misunderstand my fiancé. I declare my fiancé innocent. She has never had any improper relationship with another man except me. Even if she chose to marry for personal reasons, she has always kept her innocence for me. Please don't believe those fake photos on the internet anymore. They have caused great harm to my fiancé. Thank you, everyone. When Michael finished speaking, he stood up again and bowed deeply to the media at the scene. He always showed his humility and courtesy, which made people admire him. There was another round of applause. It was an obvious show of support and affirmation for Michael. Michael really was powerful. Even Monica was almost affected by his righteous words just now. Michael was clearly eager to protect his wife. Once the news came out, many people would envy her for having such a good man. Monica maintained her smile without saying anything. She would cooperate with Michael's acting. Once Michael sat back down, reporters began to ask questions. Mr. Ross, will you pursue this matter of slandering your fiancé? The law will pursue this to the end. Michael enunciated each word. About the explosive dance that was previously spread by your fiancé, was that real or? My fiancé likes to dance. In fact, I accompanied her to the nightclub that day, and the person she was dancing with was also a dancer. The entire dance was just a performance, but it was not on the stage everyone had agreed on. It would have caused a misunderstanding if it were at some other place. Of course, because of her dance, so many things happened after that. My fiancé will not appear on such an occasion again to avoid trouble. Michael said bluntly. Monica chuckled but did not say a word. Michael had even told her to quit the nightclubs in public. He was well prepared. Miss Cardellini, a reporter suddenly called out to her. What do you have to say about your incident and the slander? I was very glad that Michael trusted me unconditionally. For a while, I hid at home and didn't even dare to go out. It was Michael who lifted me up through this difficult time and even helped me find the source of these photos. I was very touched. Monica answered, following her standard lines. Your wedding will be held on the 15th of next month. Is there anything you would like to share with everyone? The reporters quickly gossiped. Monica did not answer. This question had been in Michael's play. Speaking of which, I've been so busy with work that I haven't even given Monica a true proposal yet. 
Let me take this opportunity to tease you today. Michael paused for a second. A handsome smile appeared on his face, and suddenly, countless balloons, confetti, and flower petals floated down from the sky. The reporters on the scene all exclaimed while Monica just looked at him indifferently. She had not expected Michael to do this. Michael had only said he would propose on the spot, not for flowers and confetti to rain down. She had been married once. However, the wedding had just been a formality, let alone a proposal. She stared at Michael as he suddenly knelt in front of her, took out a ring, and held it in front of her. Monica, will you let me pamper you, love you, tolerate you, take care of you, and accompany you from now on? Michael asked her affectionately. Monica's eyes suddenly watered. She was not really touched, just a little sad. In her heart, she knew Michael was still the man who treated her the best in the world. Why would reality give her such a big slap in the face? What if Michael was still the best man in the world for her? Even if she had broken up with Finn for him, she did not have to make herself feel so bad, nor the stupidest person in the world. However, Monica's expression at this moment made everyone think that she was touched by Michael's deep affection and love. Someone even took a photo of Monica's tear and signed it off as happy and romantic tears. It was even trending on the internet and was envied by them all. Jean said that the more she performed now, the easier it would be to slap him in the face later on. So, she would cooperate with Michael's performance. I do, Monica agreed. The applause was endless, and the balloons, confetti, and flower petals danced around them, creating a beautiful scene. Michael put the ring on Monica's ring finger. Monica's throat trembled. When she and Finn got married, they did not have wedding rings. How ridiculous. During the ring exchange segment of the wedding ceremony, Monica asked the staff to prepare two decorations. Once their vows were exchanged, they threw them away. Monica's throat trembled again. Now that she thought about it, it was possible Finn did not love her that much. He had risked his life to save her back then, but perhaps it really was as he had said. If it were anyone else, he would have done the same. He was a doctor. It was his job to save the dying and help the injured. Monica's eyes seemed to water even more. Michael got up from the ground and looked closely into Monica's eyes. He lifted her chin. Then, in front of everyone, he kissed her. Monica acquiesced. Not only was she unable to resist, but this might be the only time she would experience this in her life. While she could not enjoy marriage and love properly, and even if some rituals were fake, she would take it as it was and leave behind no regrets. The audience burst into applause again. Everyone was giving their blessings to the couple. When that day came that Michael's reputation was completely disgraced, would Michael choose to die with her? That press conference was a triumph. He had successfully cleared Monica's name and shaped himself into a good man. Everyone was talking about it with great relish. It was named the most romantic proposal in history. Finn had seen it too. When he went to the ward to check on his patient, the television happened to be broadcasting this news. In addition to the patient, there were also family members in the ward, especially the granddaughter of the family member, who was quite young. She kept saying, Michael's so handsome. Why is Michael so good to Monica? Monica is simply too blessed. I'm so touched that I'm about to cry. Finn had been listening carefully to the patient's heart. Dr. Jones, his assistant suddenly called out to him. Finn came back to his senses. He put away his stethoscope and said, you're recovering well. Continue to maintain a calm mind. After a heart bypass surgery, the most important thing is to let yourself relax. How much longer do I have to stay in the hospital? According to your current recovery progress, you should be able to be discharged in a week. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jones. My pleasure. Finn smiled professionally. He gave some more medical advice to the patient before leaving the ward. When he left, he raised his head to take a look. On the screen, the two of them were hugging and kissing. The assistant beside him also glanced at the television screen before quickly following Dr. Jones's footsteps out. Speaking of which, back then, Dr. Jones liked Monica, right? If not, why would Dr. Jones, who had always been focused on his work, be in a daze for so long just now? Finn returned to the office with his assistant. He went on to explain the patient's related matters clearly and seriously or with no mistakes at all. The assistant took a look at his notes. Had he misunderstood? Dr. Jones did not seem to care as much as he thought. Otherwise, how could he have done his work so perfectly? If he really cared, there would be some small mistakes. The moment the office door closed once his assistant left, Finn's expression finally turned cold. He pulled out a cabinet beside his desk, took out a document, 
and threw it directly into the trash can. The document clearly spelled Sunny Pharmaceutical. Sunny Pharmaceutical, a civilian pharmaceutical company, appeared out of thin air and completely replicated the development of Cardellini medical technology. Even their products were the same. In that document was all the research reports on Sunny Pharmaceutical. There was obviously no need for that now. As long as Michael did not act against Cardellini Enterprise, the company would not be in any danger. Cardellini Enterprise was an established company in the medical industry. Since it was not targeted by the government, it would not be easily banned. Since it was so easy for her to compromise, he did not need to waste his energy. Once the press conference was over, Monica left in Michael's car. The car was silent as ever. After all, there was no need for Michael to disguise himself in a place where no one was around, and she did not have to play along with him either. Monica frowned when the car was parked in the Ross's courtyard. To discuss the wedding, Michael said bluntly. Monica gritted her teeth and followed Michael out of the car. The two of them walked into the Ross's living room and were greeted there by Reese. When she saw Michael and Monica, she sneered. She stood up from the sofa and walked towards them. Just as she arrived in front of Monica, a slap suddenly landed on Monica's face. Smack. The speed was so fast that it would have been impossible to guard against. Monica glared at Reese. Michael stopped his mother before it could escalate any further. Mom. Monica, you be asterisk tch. How dare you make my son a cuckold. You even had him clean up your mess too. You be asterisk tch. Who do you think you are? Reese cursed. Monica touched her own cheek. If it were any time in the past, she would have gone crazy and returned the slap. However, she endured it today. She said, I admit that I was in the wrong previously. I accept your slap. Be asterisk tch. Reese did not seem to have finished venting her anger yet and continued cursing at Monica. Just the thought of what Monica had done during this period made Ruby want to murder her. She could not tolerate Monica treating her son like this. Mom, that's enough. Michael stopped her. I brought Monica here today to discuss the wedding. I'm already busy enough. Could you not add to my troubles? Monica's matter had not only had it affected his work, but he also had to deal with the leader's doubts about him. No matter what, his personal affairs had taken up too much of his time. Even if he could make the chief believe he was not ambitious, it would still affect his work and the Sanders contribution. The other party would not have any objections. So Reese endured it. When Michael saw that his mother was calm, he said to Monica, Come. Let's sit here. Monica pursed her lips and sat down beside Michael. Michael did not waste any time to get to the matter at hand. I won't make the wedding too grand. My status doesn't allow it, he said bluntly. However, I will do all the necessary rituals. As for the wedding photos, I've already had some photoshopped. If you think it's necessary, I can accompany you to take them. However, if you think it's dispensable, we'll get it done once I'm done with my work. No. I'm not interested in that, Monica replied. Michael didn't say much. The wedding will be held at a golf course outside Southampton City. We'll limit the guest list to less than a hundred families. I know you have more relatives and friends, so tell your parents they can invite 60 families at maximum, and us Sanders will have 40. Monica nodded. The wedding planner will update us on the rest of the details in a few days. As for the wedding dress, we'll try it on a week before the wedding. All right. As for the betrothal gifts and dowry, Michael said. I'm not going to ask for any dowry. Feel free to ask if your family needs any betrothal gifts, but I can't guarantee that I can satisfy them all. No. Reese suddenly interjected. Michael and Monica looked at her. I don't care about the other things, but we've got to have the dowry. Mom, Michael called out to her. No. Monica marrying into our family is already a social climb for her. We can't let her take all the advantages. The Cardellinis should also express their gratitude. What do you want from us? Monica asked. Thirty million in cash, two exquisitely decorated houses of more than 200 square meters in the center of Southampton City and a luxury car worth more than five million. Reese seemed to have thought about it beforehand and blurted it out. Monica gritted her teeth. This woman really knew how to talk. If it can't be done, I won't agree to this marriage. Reese was certain. Michael hesitated for a moment, then looked up at Monica. It shouldn't be difficult for you. It was not difficult, but she was furious. Why was it that when others married off their daughters, they would send money into the family, but when she married out, her family still had to lose so much money? All right, Monica agreed. She had no choice but to agree. 
In Michael's opinion, if she did not agree, the marriage would not be accepted. This meant Cardellini Enterprise would not be able to protect itself. Thus, Monica did not reject the request. There's less than a month until the wedding. You better know your place. I don't want to use my methods against you, Michael threatened. Monica did not respond. I'll send you back. Michael stood up. There was no delay once he finished speaking. No need. I can take a taxi back. Monica refused. Michael looked at Monica coldly as she left. Reese stared at Monica's back and turned to her son, saying fiercely, You can't indulge a woman like Monica. The more you let her be, the higher her tail will be. After you two get married, let me teach her a good lesson. She must be obedient to you in the future. Michael did not answer. It was considered a silent agreement. He felt that he should indeed let Monica learn how to behave herself. Monica took a taxi home. After saying a few words to her parents, who had been waiting for her, she quickly returned to her room. Then, she called her advisor, Jean. How was it? She asked about her performance at the press conference. Hee <laughs> hee. Jean laughed coldly. Monica's hair stood on end at the sound of her laugh. Did I not do well enough? Didn't you say to let Michael perform so his ego would soar? I've been playing along with his performance. Monica said, a little agitated. It was pretty good, but. Jean's but always frightened Monica. You've really blocked your marriage this way. What kind of marriage could I have? Monica had thought it was something important. So you don't want to get back together with Dr. Jones? Stop joking, Monica said. I've already made myself like this. How can we get back together? He couldn't even work it out back then, let alone now. I'm prepared to die alone. All right, then. Jean did not say anything else. Based on the current situation, it did not seem like Monica and Finn would be able to reconcile. However, as long as Monica figured it out, no feelings could not be washed away by time. She had liked Eden before and then not at all. In fact, she could not even remember what it felt like to like him. Jean returned to the main topic. So, we have achieved our first step, which was to let Michael be praised by the world and have a good image. Now it's time to make Michael reveal himself in front of the public. Yeah. Monica nodded her head, looking very serious. Does Michael have any female friends other than you? Jean asked. Ah, uh, she did not know. I don't think so. In her memory, Michael's only friend was Eden. She did not know anyone else. Only now did she realize that she might have never loved Michael before. She did not even know what kind of people Michael had around him, but she knew Finn and the people around him very well, including those female seductresses, no, female nurses in his hospital department. I only know about Melody, but she's dead, Jean said bluntly. You're looking for one of Michael's female friends to trick him into sleeping with him? It's easier to scheme the people around you. A random prostitute will easily arouse Michael's suspicion. Jean made it clear. Then I'll keep an eye on him and see if such a person exists around Michael or in his work circle. That's right. His work circle. Jean suddenly agreed with Monica. It's impossible that no one likes a capable young man like Michael. Once this person exists, what we have to do next will be much smoother. I'll be sure to find out, Monica said. Careful not to alert the enemy. Michael's level of caution is beyond our imagination. Jean reminded. All right, she said. Oh, yeah. Jean suddenly thought of something. How did Michael's mother treat you? You mean Reese? Just the thought of her made Jean angry. Probably. She did not quite remember Michael's mother's name. That woman hates me to death because I made a cuckold out of Michael. In addition, I've been lukewarm towards Michael, so she thinks I've sullied her son. When I went to their house to discuss the wedding today, I was slapped in the face by her. She even asked me for a large dairy sum, making me look like a good-for-nothing woman. Monica's words were filled with righteous indignation, giving people the wrong impression that she was not too sad. In reality, Monica was not as heartless as she appeared to be. She just did not want others to worry. Jean listened to Monica's seemingly heartless words. This girl had never expressed her discomfort and always made others think she did not care much about many things. In reality, she just did not want others to worry about her. Jean's heart ached a little but did not expose her. She said, Monica, it's not just about scheming Michael. What do you mean? Most of the time, Monica was not good at guessing other people's emotions, so she was a little surprised. Anyone who has a close relationship with him can become one of Michael's scandals and a legitimate reason for you to break off the engagement, Jean said. For example, with how Reese treated you. If you expose her malice and viciousness, you can also use it to force Michael's hand. 
Besides, I don't think you want to be bullied by Reese again, do you? Of course not. Monica was furious. She was still fuming at the thought of Reese's slap today. As she was pampered by her parents since young, she had never suffered such a great grievance. While Michael did lie to her, he did not hurt her physically. The more she thought about it, the angrier she got. Then we must use all the resources we can think of. From now on, just do as I say. Jean explained the next step of the plan to Monica very serious. Monica was still a little confused. However, she was trying her best to understand and accept it. The two of them talked for a long time. If you encounter anything unexpected that you can't solve or aren't confident about, you must give me a call. Don't let your emotions affect your decisions and act rashly. After Jean finished speaking, she did not forget to remind her, otherwise, if we're not careful, our efforts will be in vain. Michael may be smarter than we think. All right. Monica nodded heavily. She trusted Jean unconditionally. Oh, right. Monica asked Jean, where are you now? When are you coming back? I'd be more at ease if you're with me. I won't be back for a long time, Jean said bluntly. What are you up to? Monica was a little angry. Jean had always been elusive. However, the current Jean was too far away from her. She did not seem to be leading a normal life, either. What exactly happened in the seven years since she left? Jean said, there are many things that I can't tell you at the moment. It's not that I'm deliberately hiding them from you, but it'll only do us both harm if I told you. The more Monica knew, the more danger she would be in. She did not want to bring Monica into her dangerous world. So the only thing she could do now was to do her best to help Monica overcome the difficulties in her life. I feel like you're getting further and further away from me, Jean, Monica muttered. She was still a little upset about Jean's concealment. Jean did not want to lie to Monica, so she chose to remain silent. Silence meant consent. Her living environment was completely different from Monica's, and she would also not drag Monica into this. She said, actually, I think it'll be good for you to have me not with you at the moment. Jean tried her best to find a reason that would comfort Monica. It was very clear Monica needed someone to rely on and accompany her. With Monica's personality, she would definitely not tell her parents about her sadness. So, although it seemed she had lived a happy life since childhood, when she encountered something that made her really sad, she would bear it alone. Why not? It was obvious Monica did not believe Jean's excuse. Michael should still be afraid of me, Jean said bluntly. Although she had not found any concrete evidence to prove that Melody, Eden, and the others she had fought with had Michael's support, she was almost certain. She had been winning all these times. Michael must have his own scale. It just so happened that she was not in Southampton City. Now that she had disappeared temporarily, Michael would not be so guarded against Monica. It would also make their plan more successful. You mean, Michael won't suspect me too much because he doesn't think I'm a great strategist? Yeah. However, Monica was not stupid. That's why we need to seize the opportunity. If we miss it, there won't be a next time, Jean reminded her sternly. All right, Monica said with a firm attitude. Jean was worried and gave Monica a lot of instructions before finally putting down her phone. She was still in Lucy's room on the Delta Island. Lucy sat on the balcony and looked at Jean with a faint smile full of charm. After Jean ended the call, sat down in front of Lucy. She had been spending a lot of time with Lucy recently. The assassins of the Delta had changed a lot. Many of the people that Jean was once familiar with had become new faces. She was not used to it. I look forward to your daily phone calls to hear how Monica slaps Michael in the face, Lucy joked. With that, she made Jean a cup of black tea. In the hills, they could still enjoy everything that they should. There were some low-level assassins here. However, if they still could not reach the standard of a typical assassin even after training, they would be brought to the hills to be servants. The assassins would fight to the death outside, but once they returned here, they could enjoy heaven on earth. This was probably the reason why there were so many assassins, but almost none escaped. Of course, the price of sneaking away was also very high, and few assassins dared to try. Jean took a sip of the tea from Lucy. She felt that these peaceful days would not last for long. It was always calm in the eye of the hurricane. Eldest young lady, Miss Harmon. A servant knocked on the door respectfully. Jean's lips curled into a smile as she sipped her tea. Many things were about to happen. Lucy responded. Mr. Hill wants to see you in his room. All right. Lucy put her teacup down and looked at Jean's nonchalant expression. Let's go, she said. Jean stood up, and the two of them walked into Kingsley's room. 
The person following Kingsley was none other than Melinda. She stood behind Kingsley, looking very respectful. Kingsley went straight to the point. I found some clues regarding the Duncan's descendant. Jean's eyes narrowed. Lucy looked very serious as well. Do you remember when I told you that Finn disappeared for two hours? Kingsley asked Jean. She nodded. Through the analysis and elimination of the big data, we can finally confirm where Finn had disappeared to then. Jean stared at Kingsley intently. A private villa in the southern suburbs, Kingsley said. When we got there, there was no descendant of the Duncans in the villa. However, we found a strand of his hair. He had left his DNA on the scene. Jean and Lucy listened in silence. They were waiting for Kingsley's instructions. With his DNA, it will be easier to find this person, Kingsley made clear. On the 15th of next month, Michael's wedding will be held. Jean's expression changed slightly. The Sanders suspect that the Duncan's descendant will appear, so they asked us to investigate them one by one, Kingsley said. What do you mean? Jean could not help but ask. She didn't want anything to disrupt her and Monica's plan. For the Duncan's descendant to be able to return to Southampton City so quietly without leaving any traces behind, the Sanders felt this person did not appear and disappear out of thin air but rather replaced someone's position. To put it bluntly, this person may have already been around even before the Duncan's descendant appeared. After the Duncan's descendant appeared, they immediately banned him. This way, no matter how we investigate, we would not be able to find this person. Jean frowned. The possibility of this was indeed very high. After all, the human skin mask had already been developed to a near-perfect state. It had even allowed Mason to deceive everyone. What I meant was, we're going to investigate them one by one to see who the descendant of the Duncans banned. Jean understood what he meant. It was to dig out everyone in Southampton City and search for them one by one. Even though the workload was a lot and the difficulty level was high, this was probably the only way the Sanders could think of. The Duncans had really pushed the Sanders to the extreme. Kingsley nodded his head slightly. Let's investigate the upper-class society first, which means those who have come into contact with Fourth Master Swan. Since the descendant of the Duncans chose to come back, he must have had some achievements. I don't think they would hide him as a small fry, so we will first investigate the famous. Most people from the political and business world will be attending Michael's wedding. It'll be the best way to save our time since everyone will be gathered together at once, so we're all going back. Kingsley said that they were all going back. Jean's eyes flickered. Kingsley's gaze also landed on Jean. He said bluntly, once you go back, you and Fourth Master Swan will be enemies. I even suspect that Fourth Master Swan might have guessed what we're going to do, so he'll definitely try his best to stop us. If that's the case, the next time we meet, it'll be a fight to the death. I understand, Jean responded. Then prepare yourself, Kingsley said nothing more. There were not many words that needed to be said in situations like this. The Hills only had to carry out the orders. Is there anything else? Jean asked. You may leave. Kingsley waved his hand. As Jean and Lucy turned to leave, Kingsley suddenly called out to her. Lucy. Lucy stopped in her tracks and turned around. You stay. Lucy glanced at Jean. She felt that Jean needed her more at this moment. However, she always obeyed Kingsley's orders, and it was the same for everyone present. Hence, Jean left on her own. In the room, Kingsley said to Melinda beside him, you go out too. Melinda's expression changed slightly. The current Kingsley did not hide anything from her. No matter what it was, he let her be by his side. Now, his conversation with Lucy had sent her away. She did not dare to show it, but she left with some resentment in her heart. Only Kingsley and Lucy were left now. It had been so long since they had been alone that Lucy even felt a little uncomfortable. She stood in front of Kingsley and awaited his instructions. He said, when you go back this time, your task is to look after Jean. I think you should trust her. Lucy had always been fair. While Jean did have the motive to betray the hills, she would not. Lucy had complete trust in that. I don't believe that she would do anything to Fourth Master Swan if it came to it, Kingsley said bluntly. Yu Jia pursed her lips. It was true. She had not considered this. All she thought of was that Jean would not betray the hills. However, she did not expect Jean to betray Fourth Master Swan either. It was difficult being caught between the two forces. If necessary, help Jean kill Fourth Master Swan, Ching Kai ordered. That would mean she most likely could not survive. Putting aside the consequences of killing Fourth Master Swan, she would not even be able to face Jean. Jean trusts you, Kingsley said. So she won't be on guard. 
hence, she should take advantage of Jean's state to plot against her. Understood, she agreed immediately. The hills were about carrying out orders and nothing else. There were no feelings involved. Once an order was given, they would be like a demon who lost their humanity. After Kingsley had given his instructions and Lucy had agreed, a long silence filled the room. Perhaps Kingsley felt a little burdened, even if she would the one to kill Fourth Master Swan. Though, Jean was not stupid. She would be able to guess that it was an order from Kingsley, so there were still some thoughts for concern. However, this was Kingsley's business, and no one could change his decision. She said, Mr. Hill, if there's nothing else, I'll take my leave now. Although there was still less than a month before they had to leave, this mission would be huge, and there were many things to prepare. She had to start planning now. Lucy, Kingsley suddenly called out her name, his tone a little cold. Lucy looked at him. Are you hiding from me? Kingsley asked. Lucy was surprised. How dared she? In the hills, he had the final say. Her life was in his hands, so she could not hide even if she wanted to. Come here. Kingsley suddenly ordered. Although the two were only a few steps apart, he wanted her to go to him now, so she went. She took a few steps and stopped right in front of Kingsley. You want me to help you undress? Kingsley raised his eyebrows. So that's how it is, Lucy thought. She smiled as she lowered her head and began untying her clothes bit by bit. As she took off her clothes, she said, Mr. Hill, didn't you think I was too small? Kingsley did not answer. I thought Melinda served you well. That's my business, Kingsley said. Whether or not I want you is mine as well. Therefore, it was not up to her to make the decision. Lucy agreed. She had no right to speak. When her clothes were finally off, Kingsley just stared at her body. He looked at the many scars on her body. Some new, and some old. They looked hideous. Didn't you always used to deal with these things in the past? Kingsley asked. I was still young then and loved looking pretty, Lucy said nonchalantly. Now that I'm old, I don't seem to want to do it that anymore. I don't like it, Kingsley said bluntly. I'll get rid of it, Lucy said. The Hills had many talented doctors who were first-class surgeons as well. These scars were like a drop in the ocean in their surgeries. Kingsley suddenly reached out and grabbed the back of her head with his large hand to get her body closer to him, but Lucy instinctively used both her hands to resist her approach. Kingsley frowned slightly. When she realized what she had done, Lucy lowered her hands and pressed her body against his. After that, enduring Kingsley's libido was all that was on her mind. Melinda was waiting outside as Lucy left Kingsley's room. Lucy glanced at her but didn't respond. Did you do it with Mr. Hill? Melinda asked her. Though there was no need to ask. It was obvious. Lucy stopped in her tracks and said, Melinda, if you want to stay by Mr. Hill's side for a long time, it's best you don't have any thoughts of jealousy. Mr. Hill hates dealing with emotional matters. You'd better understand that now. Are you threatening me? I'm just reminding you out of kindness, Lucy said. Of course, it's up to you whether or not you want to listen. With that, she left. Melinda stared at Lucy's back as she walked away. She gritted his teeth, furious. She had accompanied Kingsley all this time, only venting his frustrations on her. He never looked for any other woman, which was something Kingsley had never done in his long life. She had clearly heard that when Lucy was with Kingsley, he had many women around him as well. However, when he was with her, she had been the only one. She thought that she was different to Kingsley. However, today, Kingsley and Lucy actually had sex again. There was no way she was tolerating this. Jean was lying on the chaise lounge in her room, seemingly waiting for her, when Lucy returned to her room. Seeing that she had returned, she couldn't help but smile. Kingsley's still spry. Jean had been waiting for Lucy for three hours. Lucy also smiled. She did not hold back from Jean. It's a pity that I'm old. Jean looked at her. Lucy said, my legs are weak. I'm going to take a shower first. Okay. Jean nodded. Lucy went to the bathroom to wash up. Looking at the marks on her body, she smiled bitterly. How long would such days last? Perhaps not long at all, as Kingsley would eventually get tired of her. Once she was done, she wore a silk bathrobe that showed off her good figure. No wonder Kingsley liked it so much. Jean looked at Lucy's flirtatious expression indifferently. He wanted to discuss with me about us returning to Southampton City next month. Lucy took out a cigarette and handed one to Jean. Yeah. Jean said, you know very well that I won't let Monica marry Michael. That won't impact our mission much, Lucy insisted. You could also break off the engagement at the wedding. It'll be a little more difficult to expose Michael at the wedding, though. She had actually thought about it. 
The best way was to let Monica and Michael release Michael's video in front of everyone during the wedding so that everyone could see his ugliness. This way, Monica could reject the marriage in front of everyone, and Michael would have no excuse to go back on his word. However, it would not be easy to tamper with Michael's wedding. Think about it. I believe you can. Lucy had absolute trust in her. Jean was silent. Lucy said, if we don't find this person from the Duncans, Kingsley will never be able to answer to the Sanders. All right. I'll think about it. Jean nodded. If you can't figure it out, come to me again. As for today, I'm feeling a little sleepy. Lucy smiled. Jean understood. After all, she had been through this before too. There had also been times when she was so weak that she just wanted to lie on the bed and never get up. She extinguished the cigarette. You should rest, then. Lucy nodded. As Jean left, Lucy looked at Jean's back, the smile on her face fading away. She did not know if she could help Kingsley to kill Jean's fourth master swan. Southampton City. Monica was going mad. She had carefully investigated everyone around Michael, but none of them matched Jean's description of someone who would be interested in Michael. Michael's life was just too simple. All he did was work. He did not have any interactions with the outside, let alone with any woman she could use. She was close to having another mental breakdown. Why was it so difficult for her to achieve something but so easy for Jean? She was in an extremely irritable state when the phone suddenly rang. Monica looked at Michael's incoming call, wanting to smash her phone. However, she fought the urge and answered the call. Hello? It's my mom's birthday tonight. We've invited some relatives and friends to a small birthday party. Dress up. I'll pick you up after work. Michael's tone was very cold. Ever since the two of them had blown up in the face of the public, their relationship had been in bad shape. She did not answer. She did not want to attend Reese's birthday party. I hope you know your place. We're getting married soon, so don't cause any unnecessary trouble. Michael's tone was even colder. Monica pursed her lips. I understand. Just like that, she reluctantly agreed to go. Michael, on the other end, did not say anything more and hung up. Monica was so angry that she threw her phone on the bed again. She really was being led by the nose by Michael, but Monica calmed herself down. If what Jean said was true, when the time came, she would tear Reese's face apart and ruin her high and mighty image as a noble lady. Today's birthday party might be an opportunity. With this mentality, Monica went to participate. She even dressed up meticulously. Michael looked at her clothes, a little impressed. I thought you told me not to cause trouble? I'm afraid if I don't dress up to attend your mom's birthday party, she'd beat me to death. Monica said fiercely. Michael did not suspect anything. As he drove, he said, the crisis of Cardellini medical technology has been resolved. Okay. She knew. Her father had told her about it. Michael was really realistic. Two days after the news came out, Cardellini medical technology returned to its absolute position in the medical world. Her father was not being ostracized by the board of directors anymore, and his position as chairman was secure. Now that their family crisis had been resolved, she had nothing to worry about. Michael drove to the Ross's compound. Every time she came here, Monica would feel traumatized. A few years ago, she had lost all face here and was mocked by the Rosses. The last time she was here, she was even slapped by Reese. Just thinking about it made her angry. Walking into the hall, she noticed that some people were already there. It was obvious that it was a small gathering. What a tragedy to be born into a family like the Rosses. He had to pay attention to everything and also suppress. Michael and Monica attracted everyone's attention as soon as they entered the hall. Since Michael was doing very well now, his relatives and friends naturally took the initiative to curry favor with him. Many people in the hall walked over. Michael's back. Michael has grown so much. Michael's such a talent. Everyone was complimenting Michael while treating Monica like she was heir. Oh, how she wished she was heir. However, she had to hold Michael's hand and force a fake smile. Is this Michael's fiance? She's even more beautiful in person than on television. When I saw the news about you, I thought you two were a perfect match. Finally, someone noticed her. Monica barely managed to cope with it. It was not easy to deal with most relatives. Then, Michael led Monica to the main character of today's banquet, Reese. Reese was dressed in a bright red today. With her noble temperament and well-maintained figure, she did not look 50 at all. At 40 years old, she still had a lingering charm. Mom, Michael said respectfully. Happy birthday. Reese had always been good to Michael. 
The corners of her mouth curled out a smile, never once looking at Monica. However, Monica still pretended to greet her. Happy birthday, Auntie. Reese turned to look at Monica and said coldly and sarcastically, Just a happy birthday? What else did she want? Monica and I have been so busy preparing for our wedding that we haven't picked out a present for you. How about we go buy it together this weekend? Michael tried to smooth things over. Monica sneered. It was not that Reese wanted a present from her, but to embarrass Monica in front of everyone. Sure enough, a few wealthy ladies who surrounded Reese were all looking at Monica with disdain. However, Monica pretended to be oblivious. Whatever Michael said was true, anyway. She was not the only one who lost face. Auntie. A female voice suddenly echoed in the hall. Monica turned her head to take a look. She looked familiar, but Monica could not seem to remember who she was. Auntie, happy birthday. The woman was very eager. This is your present. I hope you like it. As she spoke, she handed over an exquisite gift box. Reese deliberately glanced at Monica when she accepted it. Monica, of course, knew what she meant, but she continued to remain indifferent. Reese opened the woman's gift in front of everyone and was surprised to see an exquisite watch inside. Brie, how did you get it? Isn't this a limited edition? There were only eight pieces on sale in Harkin. When I went to buy one, it was all sold out. Brie smiled. I heard from my mother that you liked it a lot but couldn't get your hands on it, so I got someone to buy it overseas. I'm glad you like it, Auntie. You're such a considerate child. Reese praised her with satisfaction. Brie smiled brightly. By the way, Michael. You know Brie, right? Reese suddenly said. Auntie, you must be joking. Director Ross is my immediate superior now, so of course, we know each other. Brie appeared to be very proactive and generous. I'll be counting on you in the future, Director Ross. That's right. I forgot that you were also admitted to the quality supervision department, seemed to have just remembered and said to Michael, take care of Brie. Will do. Michael was very obedient. That won't be necessary. As long as Director Ross doesn't despise me for not being capable enough, Brie quickly interjected. As she spoke, she glanced at Michael. There was no telling through the look in her eyes if she had been gazing at Michael in some other way. Monica also could not see the reason. She had been observing this woman to see if she could be the woman Jean was talking about. Suddenly, she understood why Brie was so familiar. She was Michael's subordinate and would often follow Michael to all kinds of official events, including meetings, dinner parties, and so on. Monica gently pursed her lips, making herself look very calm. Don't just stand there. Sit, Reese said to Brie. There's no need to be shy. Thank you, Auntie, Brie replied with a smile and sat obediently beside her mother. Monica was sitting on the other side of the sofa with Michael, casually watching the interaction between them. So, Brie's mother was on good terms with Reese? Could Brie and Michael be considered childhood sweethearts? I still have some work to do. Wait for me here, but if you can't stand it any longer, come upstairs and find me. Michael suddenly whispered into Monica's ear. It almost scared Monica to death. She nodded, feeling a little guilty. As Michael stood up and left, Brie glanced at him. Could it have been an illusion? In the main hall, everyone but Monica was chatting and socializing. She felt so out of place. She did not know anyone, nor did she want to. Just as she was about to leave, she saw Brie suddenly stand up from the sofa and smile at the people around her before leaving politely. Monica watched her walk to the second floor. Seeing her leave, Reese couldn't help but say, When they were young, I liked Brie so much that I even promised to betroth her to our Michael. Now that I'm looking at it, it really is a pity. Perhaps she said it on purpose for Monica to hear. That's right. I had been looking forward to Michael marrying me, but in the end, he changed his mind just like that. You have to give me an explanation and make up for my hurt feelings. Brie angrily said on purpose. All right, all right. When the time comes, I'll introduce you to someone as talented as Michael, okay? That's a deal. A few wealthy ladies were chatting with each other. While it was very lively, not a single nice word had been said. From time to time, they would even mock her. So Monica stood up and left the hall, heading straight upstairs. She was unfamiliar with the Ross's house, let alone the second floor. Thus, she could only bump around randomly before crashing into Michael's room. Inside the half-closed door, Michael was working in front of the computer. Bree stood next to him, her head close to the screen. The two of them looked very close. However, Michael noticed her the second she appeared. Brie, noticing Michael's change, turned to look at the door. 
When she saw who has there, she stood up straight and kept a distance from Michael. Miss Cardellini. Brie took the initiative to call her. Monica glanced at her, then turned to look at Michael. Why did you come up? Michael's expression did not change. Didn't you say that I could come upstairs to find you if I was bored? Sit here for a while, then. I'll take you back once I'm done with the things at hand. Monica nodded and sat on the sofa. You can head out first. I know what needs to be done. Michael's tone towards Bree was very cold. Understood. Bree smiled before leaving Michael's room. Monica looked at Bree's back as she left, not showing any emotion. Then, she sat on the sofa in the room and played games on her phone to pass the time. After about an hour, Michael seemed to have finished his work. Just as he stood up and was about to leave with Monica, Reese pushed the door open and said to Monica bluntly, Have you told your parents about the dowry? Monica really, really hated Reese. However, at this moment, she secretly smiled to herself. She had been worried about how to uncover Reese's vicious face that she kept hidden from others, but it had delivered itself to her door so quickly. Have you told your parents about the dowry? Reese asked without hesitation. Monica looked at her coldly and did not reply. Mom, let's not talk about this for now. Michael refused. How can we not? You're getting married soon. Reese's voice was high-pitched as if she had to answer immediately. Michael was about to reply when Monica suddenly said, Okay. Let's talk. Michael looked at Monica. Monica said bluntly, Since we've chosen to get married, let's make everything clear. Reese sneered with a disdainful expression. The three of them returned to Michael's study and sat on the sofa. Monica said, My family will prepare the dowry you mentioned previously, but there cannot be a betrothal gift lacking. You still want a betrothal gift? Reese's voice grew louder, her words clearly full of sarcasm. Monica, you'd better check your own status. How dare you still have the cheek to ask for a betrothal gift? You're already climbing up the social ladder by marrying our Michael. Monica was a little angry after hearing Reese's words, but she suppressed it and said, If I don't get a betrothal gift, in return, my family won't provide the dowry. Monica. Reese smacked the coffee table in front of her. You're being shameless again. What right do you have to negotiate with my family? My parents didn't raise me to not stand up for myself. Just because you want my family to take out 30 million as well as two luxury houses and a car for a dowry, does that mean we should? While I admit that my family has the means to pay, it should be mutual. Why should my family give unconditionally when yours won't even give a single cent? That's because you're unworthy. It's your honor that we let you into the Rosses, and to allow you to marry our Michael is your greatest betrothal gift. You better know your place. I'll warn you one more time. Not a single cent less for the dowry, and I must see it a week before the wedding. There won't be a single betrothal gift. It's up to you whether or not you want to marry him. If you don't, many women do. Monica glared at Reese, unable to hide her anger anymore. You saw Brie just now. She's an educated and well-mannered lady from a wealthy family. She's better than you in every single way. I'm not afraid to tell you that Brie and Michael grew up together. If it weren't for you, they would be the ones getting married now, and you wouldn't even be in the picture. So you better know your place. Don't lose more than you gain. Enough, Michael interjected. This marriage is between Monica and me, and I'll discuss the betrothal gifts and dowry with her. There's no room for negotiation. Reese said coldly. That's the condition. Michael, if you dare give Monica the betrothal money behind my back or secretly give the Cardellinis this dowry, our relationship will be over. Mom. I won't ever compromise on this matter with Monica. I was already kind enough to let her marry into this family, Reese said firmly. I don't care how Monica grew up or how her parents indulged her. Once she enters the Rosses, she must follow our rules. Moreover, this rule will be from the moment of marriage. There's no room for discussion. Michael seemed to be silent for a few seconds. He did not want to have any conflicts with his mother regarding marriage. Since Monica was entering the Rosses, she should follow Ross's rules. She definitely could not do whatever she wanted like before. When they were in a relationship, it could be said that they doted on each other in front of the media. However, once married, Monica would take his family name. Whatever she did would be closely related to the Rosses at all times. So she had to have the demeanor of a Ross, and he could not let Monica do as she pleased anymore. It was not a bad thing to let Monica understand this truth now, either. He said, Monica, prepare the betrothal gifts and dowry according to my mother's instructions. So this is what you meant when you said that you like me? Monica smiled sarcastically. What I meant was, I like you in a situation where there are no benefits involved, Michael added. 
Monica's smile became even more sarcastic. Fine. Since Michael put it so bluntly, she would not have any guilt in taking revenge. What if I don't agree? Monica faced Michael with a firm attitude. Reese's expression changed again after seeing that Monica was still objecting. However, before she could roar, Michael said bluntly, you don't have a choice. Monica gritted her teeth. I have many methods to force you to agree. You know that, don't you? Michael threatened her coldly. It was true. If she did not agree, Michael might take action against her family. Jean was right. Only when the enemy was completely knocked to the ground without being able to even get up could it be considered a victory. She had to win the battle, not the war. All right, then. Monica agreed. It was only because Michael had threatened her that she agreed. He knew very well what Monica was most afraid of. She was terrified that the people most important to her would get hurt because of her, so she would compromise infinitely. He had no doubts about that. Seeing that Monica had agreed, Reese sneered. Monica, since you're marrying into the Rosses, you'd better know your place. Don't think you're still some rich lady. You must treat your husband's family as the sky, and do your duty as a wife. You must take care of Michael and be filial to me. Monica did not reply, and Michael did not seem to want to listen anymore. That's enough. I'll tell her about our family's rules in the future. Right now, we need to prepare for the wedding. Seeing that Monica was obviously more obedient, Reese felt a little more at ease and did not say anything more. Let's go. I'll take you back. Michael said to Monica. Monica glanced at Reese. She looked at this noble lady who was praised by the public as being virtuous, elegant, generous, with a noble temperament, and a role model wife. Right now, she was really eager to see how this role model would be praised by the world and thrown down by them. She left the Ross's residence with Michael. It was silent throughout the car journey back to the Cardellini's villa. The moment she got out of the car, Monica was suddenly pulled back by Michael. Monica's eyes moved slightly. Sit properly, Michael said. Then, he slowly got out of the car, walked to Monica's side, and opened the door for her. Monica's mouth curved into a sneer. He was acting so volatile around her, hot and cold. He threatened her in front of his mother, and now he was suddenly being considerate. The moment they got out of the car, only then did Monica realize that she had overthought it. There was no need for Michael to pretend in front of her. His affectionate actions towards her were only because he had discovered a paparazzi hiding around her villa. As long as there were paparazzi around, Michael had to show his deep love. Monica cooperated with Michael and reluctantly said goodbye to him. Before Michael left, he lifted the back of her head and planted a kiss on her lips. Monica did not resist. Some scenes had to be played out with Michael. They kissed for a long time. It was like two lovers who were glued together and could not bear to part. Monica did not refuse Michael's advances. To her, he was just a body. She would even go so far as to sell her body in order to deal with Michael. Furthermore, it was just a kiss, a deep kiss. So she allowed Michael to kiss her. She kissed Michael so deeply that even the scarily self-disciplined Michael had a slight reaction, his eyes filled with lust. He said in a hoarse voice, don't resist me in the future. All right. Monica agreed with a smile. I can love you very much. Michael made it clear. As long as she was obedient, he could love her very much. She agreed again with a smile. Michael touched her red and swollen lips with his finger. Only leave after I've gone. All right, Monica agreed. She would agree to anything he said. Michael kissed her forehead again before getting into the car and driving further and further away as Monica watched on. All this while, she had been showing how much Michael loved her. So it was Michael's turn to show that she loved him very much too. Watching her fiancé's car leave for a long time was a sign of love, especially under the deliberate guidance of certain people. Monica's eyes flickered as she watched the hidden paparazzi leave. Then, she sarcastically turned to leave. The moment she turned around, her heart suddenly tightened. Finn was standing not far behind her. Why was Finn at her house? Though, all she was thinking about at that moment was whether or not Finn had seen her and Michael kissing. She bit her lip lightly, looking blankly at Finn. Michael's kiss lingered on her lips, making her feel indescribably disgusted. She watched as Finn took in all her movements and appearances and walked past her coldly without saying a word. He did not react to her at all. Would he not have at least some emotions about her? After all, she used to be his woman. Even if he was possessive, he should have some reaction. It seems there was no salvaging her relationship with Finn. Last time, she bumped into Finn while she pretended to sleep with a young hunk. 
Other than avoiding her in disgust, he did not have any reaction either. Perhaps there was a second when he wanted to scold her, but in the end, he still remained indifferent. She had really lost Finn, and there was no getting him back again. She smiled faintly, and a tear fell from her eyes. The pugilistic world was a long journey. From then on, they had no more connections. As she walked into the villa, she found her parents in the living room. Monica composed herself before raising her voice and said, Dad, Mom, I'm back. Reese didn't make things difficult for you, did she? Ruby hurried over and asked. She knew Reese too well and could not help but worry. How could she? I didn't grow up a vegetarian. Monica did not seem to care. Don't you know how irritable I can be? When I'm ruthless, I won't even care about my own family. So how would she dare bully me? Even so, you still have to be careful. That woman isn't easy to deal with. Ruby knew her daughter would not be wronged, but she still reminded her worriedly. Okay. Monica nodded and said, Reese mentioned the dowry again. I rarely argue with her, mainly because I don't want to mess up my plan. You guys should prepare to give it to Reese a week in advance. All right. Ruby nodded. Mumu had told them this before. Even though she knew the wedding was fake, after hearing the other party's conditions and that they were not contributing a single cent, she was annoyed. As long as they were good to Monica, the entire Cardellini business would be theirs. So why would they care about such a small amount of money? It's getting late. I'll head upstairs to wash up and sleep, Monica said. The moment she left, she suddenly thought of something. She asked nonchalantly, oh, yeah. I just saw Finn coming out of the house. Your father's heart hasn't been in good condition the past two days, so we asked Finn to come over and take a look, Ruby said. No matter what state you and Finn are in, he's still your father's attending doctor and knows his condition best. We can't just cut off all contact. Besides, even with your history with him, he's still quite good to us. So there's no need for us to strain our relationship with him. Your relationship with him has nothing to do with me. Monica was a little unhappy after listening to her mother's explanation. Did she think that she would be petty? It was just a divorce. Could they really not meet for the rest of their lives? By the way, is your health all right? Monica asked Gary with concern. Gary took a deep breath. Finn said I've been under too much pressure recently, which is why I have an irregular heartbeat. He told me to relax and take my medicine on time. Dad, could you stop worrying about me? Upon hearing her father's words, Monica felt very guilty. I'm handling it. All right, all right. I'm not worried. I believe in you, okay? Gary could not stand to hear Monica's complaints. If anything happens to you, there's no point in me living anymore. What do you mean by that? Gary berated. Monica pouted. Anyway, you guys better take good care of your bodies. Then, watch as your daughter tears that scumbag Michael apart. All right. We'll wait and see, Ruby quickly chimed in. They had always held Monica in their hands, afraid she would be sad and suffer. Monica's eyes teared, a little moved. After so many things had happened, she did not feel that her parents' love would be so natural.